Chapter 11 When King Jabin of Hazor heard what had happened, he sent urgent messages to the following kings, King Jobab of Medon, the king of Shimron, the king of Akshav, all the kings of the northern hill country, the kings in the Jordan Valley south of Galilee, the kings in the western foothills, the kings of Naphoth Dor on the west, the kings of Canaan both east and west, the kings of the Amorites, the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Perizzites, the kings of the Jebusite hill country, and the Hivites in the towns on the slopes of Mount Hermon in the land of Mizpah. All these kings responded by mobilizing their warriors and uniting to fight against Israel. Their combined armies, along with a vast array of horses and chariots, covered the landscape like the sand on the seashore. They established their camp around the water near Mirom to fight against Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. By this time tomorrow they will all be dead, cripple their horses, and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his warriors traveled to the water near Mirom and attacked suddenly. And the Lord gave them victory over their enemies. The Israelites chased them as far as Great Sidon and Misrephoth Maim, and eastward into the valley of Mizpah, until not one enemy warrior was left alive. Then Joshua crippled the horses and burned all the chariots as the Lord had instructed. Joshua then turned back and captured Hazor and killed its king. Hazor had at one time been the capital of the federation of all these kingdoms. The Israelites completely destroyed every living thing in the city. Not a single person was spared, and then Joshua burned the city. Joshua slaughtered all the other kings and their people, completely destroying them just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. However, Joshua did not burn any of the cities built on mounds except Hazor. And the Israelites took all the captured goods and cattle of the ravaged cities for themselves, but they killed all the people. As the Lord had commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua. And Joshua did as he was told, carefully obeying all the Lord's instructions to Moses. So Joshua conquered the entire region, the hill country, the Negev, the land of Goshen, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, and the mountains and lowlands of Israel. The Israelite territory now extended all the way from Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir, to Baal Gad, at the foot of Mount Hermon, in the valley of Lebanon. Joshua killed all the kings of those territories, waging war for a long time to accomplish this. No one in this region made peace with the Israelites except the Hivites of Gibeon. All the others were defeated, for the Lord hardened their hearts and caused them to fight the Israelites instead of asking for peace. So they were completely and mercilessly destroyed, as the Lord had commanded Moses. During this period Joshua destroyed all the descendants of Anak, who lived in the hill country of Hebron, Debir, Enab, and the entire hill country of Judah and Israel. He killed them all and completely destroyed their towns. Not one was left in all the land of Israel, though some still remained in Geza, Gath, and Eshdod. So Joshua took control of the entire land, just as the Lord had instructed Moses. He gave it to the people of Israel as their special possession, dividing the land among the tribes, so the land finally had rest from war.